we just demonstrated a process that returns a confidence interval. which captures the true parameter some percentage of the time. So we generate all of those confidence intervals by repeating that experiment over and over and over again. We can set the confidence level, which will control how often our interval will capture that true parameter. So we control that by setting our confidence interval, our confidence level. But keep in mind, again, that's the process for repeating that experiment over and over and over again. When we pulled up this screen, we ran that experiment a hundred different times, or simulated running that experiment a hundred different times. Unfortunately, in the real world, we rarely have the opportunity to conduct a study more than once. So we can't go out and survey people and then survey a different random group of people and survey a different group of random people. We usually just get that one opportunity to go out and survey people. So we only get one point estimate and one confidence interval, which may or may not capture that true population parameter. So when we generated this list, we saw all of these different bars in green Maybe we get one of those. If we do, then yes, we capture the true population parameter. But if the point estimate and confidence interval we end up generating happen to be one of these red lines, then no, we end up with a confidence interval, a range of values that doesn't capture that true population parameter. So keep in mind in the real world, we're getting one of these 100 trials. And the problem really that then arises is, we'll never know. We'll never know if our interval succeeded or failed to capture that population parameter that we were trying to, that we were trying to estimate. We have to hope that we minimize our bias as much as possible so that we're basing our, basing our estimates off of the best possible data. And in the end, we'll be able to write a statement that sounds something like this. The 95% confidence interval estimate for the population proportion is, and then in parentheses, whatever that minimum value is for our interval up to our maximum value. So in the end, this is all that we'll really get a state, the 95% confidence interval estimate. And again, that confidence level just relates to if we ran this experiment over and over and over again and generated all of these different estimates, 95% of the time that would return an estimate or an interval that does contain that value we're trying to, we're trying to come up with. Um, so our 95% confidence interval estimate for the population proportion is something to something. So 0.2 to 0 0.4, 0.4 to 0.6, whatever that range of values ends up being. But again, we need to keep in mind that we'll never know. In reality, we never know what this true population parameter is that we're trying to estimate. We use the flipping a coin example because we do know what that is and we can see how we come up with some similarities and differences. But in reality, we never know what that actual value is. So we never know for certain if our estimate does capture that value, doesn't capture that value, and where in that range of values our estimate falls. So in the next section, we'll talk a little bit more about what we can do once we have that interval, what sorts of questions we can and can't answer. But we do need to keep in mind that this whole process works only if the following conditions are met. So to be able to construct these intervals and make these estimates, we need to have a random and independent sample. We need to have a large enough sample, large enough to expect at least 10 successes and 10 failures, and a big population, meaning if sampling is done without replacement, so meaning that we select an item and we can't pick it again, 
If we select without replacement, then the population must be at least 10 times bigger than the sample size. So in subsequent sections, we'll come back to talking a little more specifically about what we can do once we generate a confidence interval, verifying those different conditions. But this is just to kind of give you a general overview of where we're headed with this idea of statistical inference.